Hello everyone, this is Yoan, and in this episode, we're gonna make these adorable multifunctional bags using laminated cotton fabric. These bags are very versatile, they are water resistant, and you can use this for many different purposes. They are also foldable, so you can easily carry this in your purse or keep one in the car. Perfect for mom, especially if you have young kids. Have one ready in your diaper bag to put all the messy stuffs. If you like going to the gym, this will be great also to put away your sweaty gym outfit after you're done with your exercise. Great for traveling as well. You can use this to put your toiletries, extra pair of shoes. I created two sizes for this project. The small size measures about 11 inch by 11 and a quarter inch, and the larger size measures about 12 and a quarter inch by 13 and a half inch. The first compartment is the main compartment, so it is larger and it is not lined. We're not gonna use any lining fabric for this project. The lower zipper compartment is pretty effective to carry any damp or wet items since there is an extra layer of fabric of the same material for the pocket lining. Now let's talk about the fabric. As I mentioned earlier, for this project, I use laminated cotton fabric. If you wonder what it is, it is basically cotton quilting fabric that has been coated with plastic film on the right side of the fabric thus making it water resistant. This kind of fabric is very easy to find, at least in the US. Here I source my fabric on Etsy. You can also laminate your own fabric. There are products available for that, such as the Pellon Vinyl Fuse. I believe Hit and Bond and Thermoweb also carry the similar product. Another kind of fabric that may work for this project is the PUL fabric. This is another waterproof fabric. If you have watched my diaper bag tutorial, I use the same kind of fabric as the lining for my bag. All right, guys, download the PDF cutting instructions at yoansewingstudio.com. I will have the link somewhere in the description box down below as well. Please enjoy this tutorial and let's get started. First, we're gonna work on the front panel and attaching the zippers. These are panel one, two, and three three and this one is panel four and this will be the lining for the lower zipper compartment for the zipper you will need two all-purpose zippers at least 14 inches long and you want to trim off this zipper so that the entire length will be 13 and a half inch hand stitch the start of the zipper so that it will stay shut let's attach the zipper tab so you will need to cut four little rectangles two for each zipper fold the long sides in half just like that. Position that right on the edges of the zipper. So the raw edges of the zipper tab should be aligned with the edges of the zipper. Secure with a clip and then stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edges. Trim off the excess fabric so that the zipper tabs will be the same width as the zipper tape. Do the same to the other zipper. Now let's work on the lower zipper compartment. Take panel three and lay that right side up. And as usual, I wanna use my basting tape to baste the zipper. So apply that on the top edges. Take the zipper and lay that right side down with the start of the zipper at your left hand side. Press the edges with your finger so that the basting tape will be sticking onto the zipper. Now apply another layer of basting tape right along the edges of the zipper tape. And then take panel four or the inner pocket panel and lay that right side down. Once you've done that, stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now let's turn this to the right side, finger press the seams. Just do your best to push the fabric as further as you can from the zipper teeth. And then take this to your sewing machine and then top stitch. And while you're doing the top stitching, just try to push the fabric again out of the way, both the right side and the wrong side as well. If you find that your fabric tend to be sticking to the machine, and you're having a hard time to get it moving under the presser foot, you can try placing a piece of tissue paper underneath your fabric. That should do the trick. I have no such problem though, but just in case you do. Next, we're gonna sew panel two. So let's apply another basting tape along the edges of the zipper and then lay panel two right side down. If your fabric has directional prints, please pay attention to the direction. Make sure that the bottom edges of the panel too is facing up right now. Now let's flip this to the wrong side and then apply another basting tape along the edges. Bring the bottom edges of panel four towards the top. Make a fold there. And once everything is secured, stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, finger press the seams and top stitch. 
Once you've done top stitching, stitch along the edges of the inner pocket panel to hold this in place. Now let's apply another basting tape along the top edges and then take the second zipper and you want to lay that right side down, making sure that the direction of both zippers are the same and then stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Flip the zipper towards the top, press the seams and then top stitch. Now let's apply the basting tape along the top edges of the zipper and then take panel 1 and lay that right side down. Again, the bottom edges of the panel 1 should be facing up right now if your fabric has directional print. Once everything is secured, stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Finger press the seams and top stitch. Alright, so both zippers have been attached and this is how the lower zipper compartment should look like. Next, we're going to trim off the bottom edges so that this panel will measure 14 and a half inch tall. And that's it, the front panel is done. To make the strap, you want to cut a two and a half inch strip and then we're going to fold this in a fourth lengthwise, of course. So first I'm going to fold this in half and fold the edges towards the center fold. Since we cannot really iron this, just try to hold on to the fabric with your fingers. Now let's fold this again one more time in half and then clip this. Once everything is secured, stitch all around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Position the strap on the right side of the front panel, about half an inch away from the top edges. It should be at your left hand side or the same side as the start of the zipper. And then clip and then stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now it's time to assemble the back. First thing first, you want to unzip the upper zipper at least halfway. This will be the opening to turn the back right side out later. Lay the front and back panels right sides together. Secure them in place with some clips and then sew all around with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, you want to grab a pair of scissors and then clip all the corners carefully. Since this fabric will not fray, we don't need to necessarily finish the raw edges. Now let's turn this back right side out through the zipper opening. Poke all the corners, you can use knitting needle or point turner carefully because we don't want to make any hole. Alright, we're almost done. The last step will be to install the button snap on the strap. We're going to attach the male button on the inner edge of the strap, about 3 8 of an inch from the side seams. When you install this, make sure that the hook of the button is facing the front side and the wrong side of the button is facing the back side. Next, we're going to attach the female button, about 3 8 of an inch from the outer edge of the strap. When you install it, you want to make sure that the cap is facing the front side and the loop is facing the back side. So the hook and the cap should both be facing the front side. So when you fasten them, this can create a hanging loop and another function of this strap is to secure the back when it's folded. And this is how you're going to fold the back. So lay the back with the front side facing up and then fold the long side. You want to start from the side where it's opposite from the strap, just like so. And then fold starting from the top towards the bottom, also in a third. And then you want to grab the strap and wrap it around and then fasten it with a button and voila. We're going to work pretty much the same way for the small size bag. So you will need two all-purpose zippers and trim them to measure exactly 12 inches long. Once both zippers have been installed, trim off the bottom edges so that this panel will measure 12 and a half inch tall. And then go ahead and assemble the bag exactly the same way as the larger size. Uh, the strap is a little shorter than the larger size. So please refer to the pattern for a small size and then you want to fold the back also the same way. That's about it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye!